Let's kick it off with your Olympic experience, the first one in Sydney in 2000. And uh, we'll get back to your journey to getting, becoming an Olympian, but the actual process of, of actually turning up at the Olympics and being an Olympian, how was that for you? Uh, the process was fabulous. Um, I didn't realise the importance of a home games. Um, I always envisaged that you'd go away to an Olympic Games um, and perhaps was a bit disappointed that I wasn't going to get that experience. Um, the, the lead up to it, um, it just entails so much when you're actually in an Olympic squad and an Olympic team. So it starts with a lot of travel, a lot of competitions, World Cups, um, uh, results, um, selection, e everything. Um, it's, it's just a continual um, push um, to make that team. Um, being announced as a member of the team was absolutely incredible. Um, I had a fabulous result at the Milan World Cup in 2000 um, and that was um, I believe a selection shoot when I think back um, and I got a bronze medal and at that time I just felt like I knew I was going. How long before the Games did they actually announce the team? How long oh, did you know? I think probably two and a half months maybe. So not a lot of time really? To... No, so the selection, so we were still in selection um, at the World Cup in Munich and Milan um, that year and that would have been about May, June and the games were in September. So, yeah, yeah, so it's a very that. short amount of time then to say I'm now an Olympian, you just got to keep doing what you're doing, you can't change any of that point too much, maybe do you up your training, do you do anything different in that last couple of months? Um, no, I didn't. Um, I had a, a quite a structured plan um, that I was going to follow um, with all of my training. Uh, I was at um, working at the AIS part time then, so um, I would come off a scholarship program there um, in '98, and I elected to stay in Canberra and live there and work part time at the AIS or the Australian Sports Commission, and um, I balanced my work life part time, uh, chose to be a poor athlete um, and just yeah worked part time and the rest of the time I was training. Did you march in the opening ceremony in Sydney? Oh I did, I did, yes. And, and were you like work, walking on air going in there, I mean the butterflies, the, oh, yeah. the excitement, the adrenaline? It was great, no it, it, that is absolutely something I will never forget. Um, yeah, they try and corral you into your lines and, and everything. That just never works. Everyone's off their chops trying to get on TV and wave and um, feel the moment. Um, you knew it was going to be incredible when you walked into that stadium. And I'm getting chills right now remembering it. Um, it was just one of the best things of my life. It was great. How do you come down from that? How many days from the opening ceremony to you, you compete? How do you come down from that excitement and get yourself back into the... Competition oh, happens mode. pretty quickly. Um, down to business, you know why you're there. Uh, I was um, shooting both air pistol and sport pistol as it was back then, so I um, knew that I had to be very careful with managing my energy levels. So those who were shooting on the first day were not allowed to do the opening ceremony. Um, that was women's air rifle and a couple of the other competitions. Um, we were second day. We were allowed to go. Um, and the reason why we could go was that because Australia was last in, we were last to leave the village. So when you're actually in an opening ceremony and you're not the host nation, you're there from two o'clock in the afternoon until 10 o'clock at night. It's quite exhausting. So you've got to be really careful about that. With um, Sydney, we were able to leave late. So we left about five. Um, but the other interesting thing was the village was so close to the stadium that afterwards, instead of waiting to catch the buses back, a lot of us walked back and we got walking very quickly and we got in and back to our digs and we were able to get to bed in really good time. So it really worked for us. Walking onto the uh, competition venue for your first day of shooting, again, nerves, butterflies, um, but yeah. knowing you've done the preparation, knowing that you've got yourself in the best possible state to compete. Yep, absolutely. Uh, my first match was air pistol, which is not my strongest. Um, sport's my strongest. That was the one that I had medalled in at the World Cup earlier in the year. So I was expecting high things of that match. Realistically, was wanting to do incredibly well in air pistol, but I was a little bit using it as a warm up to sport. Yeah. So it was great to get that extra competition under my belt before my main one. Yeah. Yeah, you must have been extremely proud of uh, your performances. So. Um yeah, here we are, 579 in uh, Sport Pistol yeah. and 582 is the lowest qualifier into the final. So three points 
you, you've got to be proud of where you got to. But do you think maybe? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was crushed. I didn't make the final. I was really shooting yeah. at my best that year and I really expected to absolutely be in the final. Um, so the competition was pretty tough. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with how I performed in front of my family, my friends, my home crowd. Um, all the other shooters who turned up to help and all the people helping on the range. Like that was, that was awesome to shoot well, but I didn't shoot good enough. Um, so that left, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of pill to swallow. Does that spur you to go again four years later? You made it in 2004? Yeah, that was a different, I, I did want to go for 2004, absolutely. And I did go for 2004. Um, I didn't make the sport team, I made the air team. Uh, so uh, I, I had to pivot um, and focus on what is not naturally my primary match. So you got to compete at a home Olympics, which you said was very special. Mm -hmm. But have you thought ahead at 2004, it's the home of the Olympics? There's not a lot of athletes that get that double. Absolutely. Uh, we were all really excited to go to Athens and to see where the modern Olympics began. Uh, it was a really, really different Olympics. Um, the village wasn't finished, our plumbing wasn't connected. Uh, they didn't have a lot of volunteers. Uh, they paid people uh, to do the jobs that we had volunteers for, which made us even more proud. The experience of Athens for me, it's always going to be um, it's always going to rely on my result. So I had a great time there, but I didn't get the result I wanted in that match. Uh, and so that actually left me wanting more. Uh, I had to come back and redeem myself in the following games, but I didn't make that team, so. 375 in air in Sydney, 376 in uh, Athens. So very consistent on your performance. And again, around that seven, eight points out of making the top eight. So again, not that far away. Mm. <clears throat> Seven, eight points in the Olympics is a lot. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> there's no getting away from that. <laughs> no, nah, there's no getting away from that. So, yeah, not as close as I would have liked it to have been. Yeah, the overall experience, Simon, um, and obviously the village, um, meeting other athletes. Yeah. Uh, just the, the, the friendships you make across, not this Australian team, you must have made friends with international athletes. Absolutely, across the whole, across the whole career, I, I was fortunate to go for um, over 15 years in the Australian team. And you just make so many wonderful friends and you see them three or four times a year. Um, I love the friends that I make at the Nationals, you know, at, back, back here, and we see each other once a year and it's like we only saw them three months ago. But you're seeing these guys four or five times a year. You've got world champs, three or four world cups, other international comps, com games. Uh, it really, it, it, it's a real family. Talking about your beginnings, yeah. uh, your mum and dad shot? Yep. And so you were making mud pies off the back of the range yeah. as, a, as a tiny kid. Eventually you decided to take up shooting? Yep, yeah. exactly. Um, so Melbourne Pistol Club back then was in a quarry in Sunshine. And every Saturday we'd head down to the range and my brother and I, who's a bit younger than me, and all the kids, we'd all get together and, yeah, make mud pies and make a mess of ourselves and while our parents shot and then go home. And we did that. I grew up around shooting ranges, going to Echuca Opens every year and everywhere else in Shepparton. And uh, yeah, ultimately uh, came to the point where I really started to get interested in it. And as a result of that, um, decided to get into it. I had to wait till I could hold a gun up one arm um, with one arm before I was allowed to join. So I was 14 when I joined and uh, yeah, decided on shooting because it could take me to the Olympics. Mum and dad, both very good shooters, supportive. Did they push you? Did they just encourage you? Was it just, it's, it's your journey, you decide how you want to do it? Definitely my journey. Uh, they didn't push me. I didn't need to be pushed. I was very motivated. Uh, so early on, junior shooting, with the camps that I was able to attend, my dad representing Australia was my first coach. Um, Mum's input um, from a different perspective. Um, one of the things today was be your own coach. So I was listening to both of them. They're both very different in the way that they approach their shooting. Uh, and I just took it all on board, sucked it all in, sponged it in and um, just started following them around the open circuit and shooting opens and fortunately got better and uh, made the state team in, as a junior. So their early influences, other people who were big influences in your career? Um, probably the next big one would be Paul McCormack, um, who was my coach um, in the lead up to the 2000 Olympics. 
um, he had a great influence on, on how I shot. When did the idea of becoming an Olympian really set in for you when you thought, that's what I want to do? And when did you then realise that you could actually do it? When Australia put in for the Olympics for 2000, I was very interested. It's always been sort of something in the back of my mind. But uh, when the announcement was coming along in 93, I very specifically watched that announcement. I very specifically wanted us to get it. And that was the moment that I sat on the floor in the lounge room of my unit at the time. And when the announcement was made, I just said to myself, I'm going to the Sydney Olympics. And that was the moment I really kicked in my preparation for the 2000 Olympics. That was going to be my next question. What did you then do to achieve that goal? What did you change? Did you up your training? Did you do, you know, what, what did you change or what did you do? Oh God, it's a bit of a vague memory now, but um, back then I definitely did up my training. Uh, I was pretty dedicated training person anyway. Uh, and I, I knew that in order to get to the Olympic team, you had to make the Australian team. I just kept driving myself towards making that Australian team and increasing my scores and, and learning off different people, things that I could adapt to work for me. Um, and I pretty much shot my first 580, which was like a national training squad qualifying score. Um, I think probably about the beginning of 95. And I got invited to a national training squad camp up in Sydney. And I learnt so much that weekend. Uh, and I just took it all on board, just kept sponging it all up, you know, kept adding it to my toolbox, kept increasing my knowledge and trying things out to see if they worked for me, what didn't, um, throwing bits out, eliminating, adding. Um, and then I selected for um, the Australian team for Oceania in 96, oh, sorry, at the end of 95, um, and was fortunate enough to make the team and go off to there on my first Australian team shoot and win. The Olympics are coming to Australia in 2032. Uh, now's the time, like if you're, if you're even thinking about potentially um, going to an Olympic Games, start now. I mean, I started seven years out. You can start earlier, the earlier the better. You still love shooting. Can you define what your love of shooting is or why you love shooting? I love shooting because it's an opportunity for me to test myself. It's an opportunity for me to become completely and utterly absorbed in the sport when I'm on the line, when I'm concentrating. It thrills me. Uh, I, I love everything about it. I love the people. I love sharing stuff. I love talking. I love the relationships. But um, I just love being on the line. I love having my 22 in my hand and I love the process of shooting. I love the opportunity to improve with every shot that I do, with everything that I'm trying to achieve. Um, the goals are different now than what they were, um, but when I get on that line, the competitiveness in me and the desire to achieve has never stopped, never waned, never will. Mm. You still compete nationally, you still compete around the country. Um, as you said, your focus and your goals are a little bit different, but you still step on the line and want to win. Absolutely. Mm. Um, I'm pretty disappointed when I don't, but I have to temper that with how much training I'm doing, um, which is nowhere near what I used to do. Uh, other focuses in my life now, um, such as work and other things. Um, but to get on the line and shoot with others who are um, striving to do what I've done in the past um, is a real honour. And um, I really love watching their journeys. 20 odd kids here at the junior camp that hopefully, as I said, you've, you've lit the spark for them to, to dream and believe that they can go all the way? I hope they do, um, and I hope that's what I've done. Mm. That's, that's, for those of us who have done that journey, I think it's, it's, it's our responsibility to, to do that um, and to find a way of getting that passion into them so that they retain it and stay in the sport. Well, fantastic. Linda, um, you've had an incredible journey to this point in your shooting career, and congratulations on, obviously, Sydney 2000 and... Athens 2004, being an Olympic representative, being on international teams, competing around the world. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. It's been an honour and thanks for the invitation.